It's been two hours. We're at 10.30. 12.88. 12.89. So it does work. What's up guys, Anza04. I'm gonna make a battery box for the trail cam. As you know, these batteries get very expensive over time. I don't know if you guys can see that, but we're reading at $13.99 for a 12 pack. So over time it gets pretty expensive. So let me go through some of the parts that are required in order to make this battery pack. And note, this camera has 12 batteries and that then will equal 12 volts. So I put this cam off the side. It's a 4K camera. I have another video coming. Just wait for it. All right, first thing, you're gonna need to get the Stealth Cam, because that's what the brand is. It's a battery cable. They run about 10 to 12 bucks. Um, get it out of here. It's got the positive and negative terminals here. I'll get a little closer. Right there, positive and negative terminals. And it's got the power jack. This, this power jack reminds me of a Sony CD player back in the day with a little yellow tip. <laughs> All right, the next item is a battery of some sort. Um, there's millions of batteries like this. It just has a term, two terminals, positive and negative on top. And this is a seven amp hour. This will probably last three months of hard use. So this is another 20 bucks or so. And last but not least, I went with the 30 cal ammo box. These are cheap plastic. They come with gaskets inside. You can see right there, small container, perfect for the battery. And ironically, fits the trail cam and the battery perfectly. And it closes. Pretty cool. <laughs> All in one. Some other non-standard parts that you're gonna want um, are these cable glands is what they're called. It's a PG7 cable gland. And if you look closely, you'll see the rubber insert. And let me show you how this thing works. And as you squeeze and compress, it gets smaller and smaller. So what it's supposed to do is creates kind of a watertight seal around the cable. And typically what you do is you drill a hole on the one side, it's, I think it's about a half inch, you lock it in with this plastic nut, feed the cable through and cinch down to create that waterproof seal. Um, let's see, what else? Yep, heat shrink. Some wire nuts and wire cutter. Simple stuff. I have two of them. Uh, I will be going through a solar power version of this, so if you want, you can continue watching, or I might splice it into two videos. But this is. All right, let's get into the meat and potato of cutting. So take the stealth cam power cord and cut. And the reason why I'm gonna cut is with this cable gland, you cannot fish these terminal ends through this uh, rubber grommet. So, snip, snip. Before you snip, make sure you kinda hold on to it because you want to make sure you don't get the negative and positive uh, mixed up. So since we cut, looks like the top side is the positive, so I will add a little heat tube, shrink tube, shrink wrap to it. So I know I'll make a mistake. <laughs> okay, next on the box, kind of predetermined and marked a spot that I'm gonna drill. So I will do that now. And you can notice there's two marks. Uh, the other one hole is gonna be for the power cord to the camera and the other one is gonna be for solar. Right there are two marks. I'm using a step up bit. Boom, done. Pretty simple. Ah, yeah, look at that. Okay, let's, let's zoom in right there. Grab the plastic nut.
and boom. Look at that, pretty cool. So what I'm doing right now is just feeding, oh, before I do that, I gotta, I always do this. Make sure you feed this connector in first through it and then feed in the wire. Sufficient amount. And as you cinch it down, that's gonna create pressure. And then if you look closely, let's see, is this as close as it's gonna get? You can see how the gland compresses along around the wire. in there again. Okay, and then let's work on the internals. Um, so first I'm just gonna show you the basic, align your battery however you want. Actually, now that those little terminals are there, will this still fit? Oh, it's very, very close, but maybe not. Strip the wire on this. I don't even. wire nuts. So we got the white little tag is positive. I'm going to follow that line. Positive. Positive. Wire nut complete. Do the negative. Positive, negative. Positive. Oh, wrong battery. It's the nine amp. And grab the seven. <laughs> Positive here. Negative here. And in theory, here is the jack. There's no battery, right? Grab the jack. Move this guy. Plug and. Do we have power? Look at that, we got power. Good stuff. Can't see it because it's green and the camera does not pick up green that well. I don't know why. So you can't really see the menu system. Um, but it works. There's no battery and we made ourselves a battery backup. Pretty simple. And that's a wrap. Okay, I'm gonna go talk and transition to solar power. So I bought this 1.8 watt battery maintainer. It's just for 12 volt batteries. Um, and this is what's inside the box. Got the panel. As you can see, my face. <laughs> and the camera. Here's the panel. The stats are on the back. So we have 1.8 watts, 110 milliamps, 12 volts, and it's about a 13 by four by a half inch. So the solar panel, what it's gonna do is it's gonna maintain the battery life so you don't have to recharge it as frequently. Alternatively, with that game camera, it should last you about three months before you have to charge it. So if you have more than one battery, you can just swap out the battery once a month and you'll be more than sufficient. Um, with this setup, you pretty much have a self-contained system as long as you have a memory card that won't be full. No big deal. And then some of the cords that come with it are alligator clips and 
cigarette plug, and a bunch of suction cups. We won't be using any of those because we're going to be chopping the line. Warranty, it will be null and void. <laughs> ah, before we move on, I did a couple tests with um, on a sunny day. And you can see 13.6 on the meter, full sun. Uh, kind of the setup right here. Alone, without it being hooked up to the battery, I was getting around 20 to 24 volts. So getting more than the 12 for charging purposes is good, but it's not a regulated solar panel, which means you would need a solar charge controller in order to regulate that voltage properly. Because we're dealing with very, very low voltage, I think we will be okay. Um, there is risk that it could damage the battery, but I think it's gonna be minuscule because it's 110 milliamps. Um, what that means is if you have a seven amp hour battery, you have 7,000 milliamps in theory one one amp hour 1000 milliamps etc so if you burn through 7000 you do the math 7000 divided by 100 that's going to be quite a while in order to charge it from uh, full depletion so going up based on that i will plumb this back into that battery box and uh, i'll walk you through it in the next step okay here we go. Again, we're trying to figure out which wire is positive. So it appears anything with that white line, uh, the white line is considered positive. So I will take approximately a foot or so off from here and snip. And there is the white line. Discard or save. I mean, you could somehow rig something up later, but I'm just gonna throw this off the side for now. And again, I will separate these wires. Red heat shrink. Visual confirmation that that is hot. And you can tell by the strands of these wires how thin it is. Very, very, very thin gauge wire. So what that means is there's not much current rolling through that solar panel. Okay, now move this off the side a little bit. Bring my battery backs, backs back up. The little plugs right there. So twirly twirl twirl. Make sure you fish this guy through before you do anything. Ah oh, yeah, look at that. These strands are very, very thin. Let's see how much I want to push through here. The beauty of um, having all this extra cord from the solar panel is you can just pull it inside here, just coil it up, and then you can adjust it based on however much you want. So right now, I'll just leave enough so that, yeah, something like that looks good. Tighten this down. And you can see that it's pretty snug and the rubber is tightly pressed down on it. Okay, go find the wire nuts that we were monkeying with earlier. So I'm gonna get positive. Unfortunately, I can't test this because it is 10 p.m. Solid.
and that is set. The reason why I'm using these wire nuts is if I need to do any maintenance, it's very simple. Plus I can fish them in and out of here real quick. Um, there are other solutions since I thought this was the best in terms of um, making modifications. So now I'm gonna tidy up this excess. And then tomorrow I will test this setup out. Well, no, it's sun. Uh, it's supposed to be cloudy, so it's not gonna work. Look at that. Um, I wonder if this will work. Oh yeah. See that little blue light? That means there's a solar, it's charging it. Great, but once again, if I turn down this light, plug this in, you will notice that this thing still has power. Pretty cool. Something to note about the solar panel, make sure the panel has a diode and what the diode does is it helps prevent the battery from discharging when the sun is not available. So it's kind of like a blockade or a block. Otherwise, when it's sunny, it's always charging it. But if it's not sunny, if it doesn't have a diode, it will draw the battery out in reverse and you will have no battery. So not the best thing, but just make sure it's got a diode. Everything that I've discussed today, I will put links in the description below. Click the link below, 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 below. And then any questions, let me know. Long-winded, but hopefully informative. Thanks. All right, it's around 8.30. I'm gonna go check the charge. I just uh, put it by the window. So it looks like 12.76 is what the charge is of the battery, current state. So when I get back from church, uh, we'll see what it reads once I get back. It's been two hours. We're at 10.30. Twelve eight eight. Twelve eight nine. So it does work.